Our first lesson is to learn the ABCs. Are you all ready to start? I will sign slowly. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. I can do that again for you. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. So practice those ABCs. Good job. When you meet a deaf person, you want to go over how to contact each other. So you'll exchange your contact information. Most commonly used is email. Email. This is a sign for email. Phone number. Now, many deaf people don't use the telephone, but they might use text messaging, which uses a phone number. So you might ask for a text phone number. Pager. Pager. If you give your address, you'll typically spell it out. Contact. You might say something like, I will contact you by pager or by email. If a deaf person is communicating with another deaf person, typically they'll use a video phone. They might give you their video phone number. All right, good job. Hello again, my name is Rachel and my sign name shows curly hair because I have curly hair. Today I'll be signing American Sign Language, also known as ASL. ASL is used only in America. Just as spoken English is used in America, they have other versions of English in other countries as well. American Sign Language is not global. It's primarily used in America. I will do my best to teach you some basic signs and the alphabet onto some simple concepts. Now it's important to understand that I won't be able to teach you everything about the language and if you're interested in pursuing further education to enhance your sign language, I do recommend that you take some courses in American Sign Language or even meet other deaf people. That is a wonderful way to learn sign language. You might also purchase some books and watch videos. So there are a number of ways to learn sign language. Are you ready to start with lesson one? It's important to keep in mind that when you meet a deaf person, it's likely that they'll ask you whether you are deaf or whether you're hearing. That is just a typical part of deaf culture so that they know who in the room is deaf or hearing. It doesn't mean to separate the communities. It's just a way of identifying one another. If they know that a person is hearing, then they might modify their sign language to make it a little bit clearer for a new signer. And it will be helpful to know whether or not a person is deaf or hearing. This is the sign for hearing. Deaf. Deaf. I am deaf. Do you sign? Do you sign? Have you signed a long time? Or did you just recently learn? 
I'm learning, learning. You'll want to practice those signs. Practice. Will you repeat, please? Will you repeat, please? If a deaf person is signing very quickly, you might ask them to slow down. Slow down. It's too fast. It's too fast. Good job. Now we'll teach you some signs for ethnicity. You might talk about the color of the skin. White. White. Black. Or African American. Black. African American. Dark. Light. Chinese. Indian, Jewish, Irish, typically you'll incorporate the color of the skin or where someone is from. Let's review. White, black or African American. I also forgot to include Native American. Native American. Light skin. Dark skin. Tan. Tan. And where they're from might be China, Japan, India. They might be Jewish. Practice those signs. Now I'll teach you a little bit of etiquette. Some appropriate ways to communicate with a deaf person. It isn't like communicating with a hearing person. Speaking and signing are entirely different. The first thing that's very important is that you maintain eye contact. It isn't rude to keep that eye contact in the deaf community. A deaf person doesn't appreciate if someone looks away because they need to make sure that they're maintaining that communication with you. American Sign Language is a visual language, so it's okay to maintain that eye contact. If you need the attention of a deaf person, you wouldn't yell. You also wouldn't throw something. It's okay to tap a person on the shoulder or give them a gentle wave. But I would say the best way is to tap someone on the shoulder if you need their attention. Facial expressions are also vital in communicating with a deaf person. A deaf person can read a person's expressions very well. If you sign with very flat emotion on your face, they might not understand what you're trying to say. The last important thing is not to nod as if you're bluffing. I know that hearing people typically do that often, but with a deaf person, if you're nodding when you don't understand, that's not appropriate. So you want to make sure that you're showing when you understand, but don't pretend to understand. Okay? Good job. Now I'll teach you some signs for face. Face. Eyes. Eyes. Blue eyes. Brown eyes, green eyes, nose, nose, mouth, mouth. You might describe the size of a face, a thin face or narrow face, round face or chubby face, or large face. Now it's important to note that deaf people are very descriptive when they talk about a person and what they look like. If you're describing a person who might be heavy set, it's not meant as an insult. It's just to help identify who might be involved in the conversation, so keep that in mind. Let's review. Face. Eyes. 
nose, mouth, narrow face, chubby face. Good job. Now we'll go over clothes and how to describe someone and what they're wearing. Shirt. You might say a white t-shirt. Short sleeves. A blue long sleeve shirt. Jeans. Jeans. Slacks. Slacks. Coat or coat and tie. Jacket and tie. Casual clothes. Casual clothes. Formal clothes. Formal clothes. Business casual. Business casual. Bathing suit. Swimsuit. Let's review. Shirt, and you can describe what it looks like by the color, the length of the sleeve, etc. Jeans or types of slacks. Slacks. It's important to think about how you want to describe the appearance of what someone's wearing. Good job. Now I'll teach you some signs for clothing and different types of clothing. Shirt, shirt, short sleeve or long sleeve, pants, pants, socks, socks, shoes, shoes. Flip-flops, flip-flops, hat, hat, jacket, jacket, scarf, scarf. Let's review. Shirt. You might even add if something's a t-shirt. Pants. Pants. Shoes. Shoes. Socks. Hat. Jacket. Scarf. Good job. Practice those signs. Okay, now we'll teach you how to sign some signs in regards to family and friends. Family, mom, dad. You want to remember that signs from your nose down are typically female and from your nose up are typically male. Mom, dad, aunt, you can see it's from the nose down, uncle, Sister, brother, cousin, cousin, grandma, grandma, grandpa, grandpa. Very similar to mom and dad, but because it's the next generation, you move your hand out. Grandma and grandpa. You could have your great-grandmother, which you would actually move it out even further, or your great-grandfather. Friend. All right, practice those signs, friends and family. Now I'll teach you some signs for the front yard and the backyard. Front yard. Front yard. Some things you might see in the front yard are grass. You might have a fence. Fence. 
there might be a walkway. Walkway. Flowers. Flowers. Plants. Plants. In the backyard, you might have trees. Trees. A back porch. A swimming pool. Let's review. Front yard. Flowers. Grass. Walkway. Fence. Swimming pool. Backyard. Trees. Good job. Practice those signs. Now I'll teach you some signs for glasses. You can incorporate the size and shape of the glasses in your sign. Glasses, if they're larger. Or you might show some smaller glasses. Glasses. You might show glasses that point at the end. Glasses. You might show thick lenses. Thick lenses. Someone might also wear contacts. Contacts. Nowadays, people have LASIK surgery. LASIK surgery. Reading glasses. Smaller reading glasses. Sunglasses. Sunglasses. Let's review. Size, appearance, large glasses, smaller glasses, reading glasses, sunglasses, thick lenses, LASIK surgery. Practice those signs. Now I'll teach you some signs for furniture. Furniture. Couch. Couch. Chair. Chair. Coffee table. Coffee table. TV. Television center. Bed. Bed. Table. Table. Dresser. Or drawers. Armoire. Armoire. Let's review. Couch. Coffee table. Television center. Table. Chair. Bed. Armoire. Dresser or drawers. And practice those signs. Now I'll teach you some signs for shopping. Shop. Grocery shopping. Grocery store. You can see the difference between shopping and store. Store is a noun. Shopping is an action. When you're in the store, you might be in a grocery store, and you might see a cashier. Cashier. Aisles. Aisles. Fruit. Meat. Cereal. Bread. Milk. You might have the dairy aisle. 
So we'll review. Shopping, store, cashier, aisle. Practice those signs. Now I'll teach you signs for height. There are a few different signs for height. Tall. If someone says, how tall are you? You might say, I'm 5'6". Five, 5'8". Five, so you use the numbers that we practiced earlier. You don't have to say 5 foot 9 inches. You would just give the two numbers. And someone would understand. Short. Medium height, tall, or even the same size. If someone's very tall, you'll show that on your face. Let's review. Height, or height. Five six, five nine, six one. Short, medium height, same height as me, tall. Practice those signs. Good job. Now I'll teach you some signs for hobbies. Things that you enjoy. Your hobbies. A deaf person might ask you, what are your hobbies? You would respond by saying, I enjoy reading. I enjoy walking. I enjoy playing with animals. So you'll use that sign for enjoy to mean hobbies. Your hobby might be playing a game, watching television, games, watching television. There are a number of different hobbies, things that you enjoy. It's important that you show your facial expression. Good job. Some other hobbies might be playing Scrabble, riding a bike. There are a number of things. Good job. Now I'll teach you some signs for hair type and color. Hair. Hair. Curly. Curly. Straight. Straight. Long. Long. Short. For colors, you might have blonde. Blonde, similar to the sign for yellow. Brown, black. Let's review. Curly, straight, short, medium length, long, brown, black, Blonde. Cut. You might cut your hair or go to a hairstylist. Good job.